Hey, what's up, y'all? So I spoke to Maria Von Loesch. Let me tell you, I love her. Oh, my God. So we talked about personal branding and and feminine, femininity and showing up and, and doing things the way you would want to do them. And I mean, we talked about not being married to your business and making sure that you are paying attention to you what's around you. I mean, it was so good. It was so good. I think you're going to love this conversation. I know I say that often. It's because I love the conversations that I have here on Straight Talk. And you guys have been amazing. You've been sharing the episodes, like and sharing and subscribing and all of that amazing stuff. And I cannot thank you enough. And I want you to please pass on this amazingness of these wonderful humans I have on the show so that other people can also subscribe and listen to amazing humans. You guys are freaking awesome. I love you so much. So I'm going to shut up now so you can go ahead and watch the episode. I'll see you there. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Dina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. I am so excited you're here. I freaking love you guys. You guys have been putting the show on the map, really sharing and subscribing and downloading and all that amazing stuff that you've been doing. And I cannot tell you how grateful I am for that. And I love that because you know I go around this amazing planet finding the best humans I can find to come on here to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. And today, y'all, is no exception, okay? I got Maria Van Loesch with me. Okay, she is a coach, a mentor, a serial entrepreneur, a speaker, an OG blogger, influencer, like the whole thing, okay? Known for being stylishly pragmatic with a side of woo, Maria blends design and style and branding and content marketing to guide ambitious women into activating their deepest desires and aligning their personal brand power, y'all. I hope y'all, hello. I hope you're listening, okay, because Maria is here to really pour into you today, and her motto is all about diving in and giving life your ideas no matter the timing. I freaking love that. So, Maria, thank you for being on Straight Talk. I am truly grateful. How are you today? I'm super. Wow, what an intro. I hope I can live up to that. <laughs> it's your resume, woman. It's your resume. Yes, I am too. so excited you're here. I love speaking with women like you who are really, you know, they take their experiences, things they've been through, all of that, and then they use that to empower other people. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So I love that you're here and I love that people are listening. So we start off always with the same question because I want to know you a little bit better. So who okay. are you, Maria? Who are you tell that, us <laughs> that is such a good question well i love to leave a little mystery so and a little curiosity so i don't divulge too much no i'm just kidding <laughs> i'm an open book actually um wow who am i well i am a southern california girl first of all and i guess i can consider myself a serial entrepreneur I started my first business when I was 22. I opened up a vintage clothing store in Hermosa oh, Beach, cool. California. Mm -hmm. And while I was working my first serious job from college, uh, I was working at a PR slash advertising agency. So basically I ran on three and a half hours of sleep every day. <laughs> it was pretty wow. insane, I know. Um, Eventually, I closed my store down. I think it was after two and a half, three years. I knew I couldn't keep the pace and I wanted to really, um, you know, get the full experience of being in the the PR world because I loved it so much. I, mm -hmm. I love, you know, promoting brands, talking about brands, creating their life, their stories. Um, I think it's just a natural thing for me. And also I had a journalism background, so that was very helpful in oh, being yeah. in PR as well. And it's interesting because I kind of actually went back and forth between uh, being a journalist and being in PR. And a lot of people do do that. A lot of my friends who are in the media world go into PR for a while, then they go back to media again. So you see us always kind of crossing paths back and forth. So it's just a very uh, seamless transition. I was doing that for a while. 
I opened up my own small agency in Los Angeles and my clients were travel destinations, uh, lifestyle wellness brands, Mm -hmm. um, you know, also like, um, physicians and chiropractors and doctors, anything that fell into like the, the wellness space. Um, and then from there, blogging happened, MySpace happened, YouTube happened, (laughs) Facebook happened, uh, Twitter happened, then Instagram and, you know, all of that. And my clients at the time were like, oh my goodness, do we need to jump on this blog thing, the YouTube thing, the Facebook thing? Where are we going with all this? So I really had to... uh, you know, dive into all of that and learn as well, because how am I going to provide these services to my clients and move forward with all the new technology? So uh, luckily I was in Los Angeles and I got to really learn from um, the experts at Google, at AOL, at Yahoo. Um, It was very, a great experience. And here's the thing that I don't share too often is when Instagram first launched, I was one of the first people in the first year of Instagram to think about using it for small business. And I was hired by a company in Santa Monica. They were providing these um, training videos like mm. you, everyone, you know, does tutorials online. Right. Back then, um, they asked, they hired me to come into their offices, their studios and do a training video on how to teach small business owners to use Instagram oh, wow. for their small business. And this was the first year of Instagram. So That's I so was cool. way ahead of the curve. Like right. I always found that to be one of my uh, blessings and curses. Because it's a, it's a blessing because I'm such an early adopter and a trailblazer. Right. But then it's a curse because people are not ready for it yet. So when it, mm, it, yeah, it, that's true. Just like with Chat GPT, when it first came out, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm diving into this. This sounds really cool. I'm going to see how to use it. And then I tried to launch a workshop with Chat GPT, how to you know use it for your personal brand and create content. And Mm. nobody was on board yet. They were like, wait a second here. AI, ChatGPT. Right, right. I'm just getting used to creating reels and TikToks. (laughs) No. Uh -uh, Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So So, true. (laughs) So true. So fast forward, um, I, I dove into a bunch of other, you know, types of businesses and they all relate. And here I am back doing uh, personal branding and um, helping, you know, other female entrepreneurs grow their brand. That's really, really great, right? I, I want to go back a little bit because um, you said you had your vintage uh, clothing store and um, you had to close it. How, how did that feel for you to close it, right? Because I think that's what a lot of entrepreneurs sometimes get a little hung up on, right? Yeah. It's like... Um, they know maybe something is calling them or there's a passion or there's something going on and, but they don't want to let go of something they've started or they don't want to let go of this thing. Right. So Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because that, that even though you, I'm sure were thinking, okay, I do want to go in this space that I'm, you know, working in now that must've still been hard for you. Was that hard for you? Was that easy? Were you happy to get rid of it? Tell me a little bit about that journey. Oh, wow. I love that question. And no one ever asked me that. Um, You know, just thinking back to that one, I, it was my first baby, I guess you could say my first business baby. Right. Um, I, I was a little sad and I think, but I was ready. Yeah. And I was prepared to close it down. Uh, the thing that made it hard, I guess, emotionally was that uh, all my customers and, and just the the locals in town, because back then Hermosa was still kind of like this really local beachy vibe. It hadn't really sprouted yet. So most of uh, the stores down there were, you know, just mom, pa type 
shops. Yeah, I love so, that. So, mm-hmm. um, so my customers like, what? You're gonna close? Why? You know, everyone was just like <laughs> shocked. Like, no, don't do it, don't do it. So <laughs> I think that's what uh, made it hard. Um, I do have a, a couple of other businesses that I I let go as well. I have I so funny. I was just sharing this with a mentor of mine. Or uh, I was I'm mentoring a foster adult actually right now is a is a giving back program. And um, wow. we were on a call just before this, and I was sharing a a product based based business that I created with her. And I shut this business down, but not. I actually sold it. So okay. this this was a different pivot, but um, these are the the products and I just happen to have it. So they were antenna balls. So you remember Jack in the Box had these antenna balls you would get? Yeah. This was the first branding package, not so great. And then I got Wise and I, I made better branding. How cool and then is here's that? Here's the other guy, the Spike. <laughs> so the Punk Rock Ball and the Mohawk Ball. And I had some other other ones here but that was another yeah that was another (laughs) business where i was ready to let go as well Mm -hmm. um what do you think when you say ready to let go like was that uh, what do you mean by that i i'm I'm curious about what you mean because you said that for the first one too what do you mean by you were ready to let go um i i ready to let go so that way I can move on to other things that I felt like I needed to do. That's good, right? I think, yeah. you know, when I speak to so many um, of these amazing women that I speak to, a lot of them are so married to their idea or business that it's a little hard for them sometimes to pivot or to realize that there's maybe a, a change that needs to happen or something, you know, uh, maybe there's something that needs to be added or taken away from that baby that they call their baby, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think, you know, at least the 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 entrepreneurs that I have spoken to that have really been successful, um, and I get that privilege on this show to speak to people like you who have been, been successful and are really out here doing their thing. And one of the things is that they are open-minded to all types of business opportunities. They do not marry the business. You yeah. know what I mean? They They just, oh, that's a great idea. Does it make money? You know, is it going to do what it is I want it to do in the world? You know, is there an ROI? You know, that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so they look at it very logically. And Mm -hmm. I think that is so wise because when you can look at something logically, you're not, you're not invested so emotionally into it that you, uh, some people just go down with the ship, Maria, you know, know, know. some people (laughs) just go down with the ship. That's why I kept asking you, like, what do you mean by letting it go? You know, like some people can't seem to let something go and it's dying. It's like just dying and you can't let it go. What would you say to someone who's listening who is like, damn, Nina, (laughs) that's the way I feel right now. Right. What would you say to somebody uh, about that piece of the journey? Um. I feel like if you really feel in your heart of hearts and in your gut, you got to listen. You seriously do have to listen to your gut and Mm -hmm, your mm -hmm. insides and not let your brain, um, you know, tell you to hang on to it or you can't logically think it out. It's it's the feeling. So if you really feel like it's time to move on Mm -hmm. but you're just like no i invested so much money so much time it's been years no i can't i can't i can't yeah um you got to go with your your heart and your gut where it's telling you no it's time to go because here's the thing that happens when you real you you will know when it's time to let something go you do know and Mm -hmm. once you do do it something bigger and better takes its place. Yes. And that's yes. the that's the scary part for so many people because you know, uh, it's the fear of the unknown, right? We did, there's no um like a concrete evidence out there to say that oh yeah, that thing's now going to replace this thing. Right, right, right. So when you let something go, you're you're kind of like jumping off a ledge a little bit and and hoping someone's going to catch you, right? right. <laughs> so, yeah, so that that's a little scary. It's scary for yeah, everybody. For sure. 
but sure. I think you really need to just trust yourself. And I feel like a lot of people don't, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of inner work, a lot of mindset work. You, you need to really trust yourself. One mm -hmm. of my mottos I think is helpful in, in this particular instance that we're talking about is to live your life like a loose garment. Oh, explain, yeah. explain. <laughs> So living your life like a loose garment, you know, you, when you wear something like loose and easy, you're relaxed, you're calm, you're, you're not yeah. attached, you know, it's not clinging on to you. You can yeah. flow freer, you know, you feel easy, you feel lighter. Um, you're more like in tuned with your body because you're not feeling constricted. That's good. So yeah. And, and it's all about, you know, detaching from really the, the result of everything, you yeah. know, but attachments are one of our biggest, um, paralyzers. Yeah, they really yeah. are. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, here's a, here's something that just came up a couple of days ago. My sister, she, um, I think she's just doing something so amazing in her, her midlife right now. She's always wanted to be a singer of a band. So she decided I'm going to, you know, create a band of my own. I love and, it. And I so, love it. <laughs> yeah. So she, uh, she put together a tribute band for Alanis Morissette songs. Oh, cool. And, um, <laughs> and she had her debut performance the other night and she was so nervous. She called me a few hours before and I was going to see her, but she called me a few hours before and she said, Oh God, I don't know why I'm so nervous. I'm usually not like this. And, and she says, you know, she was worrying about everything else, right? Yeah. Attaching herself to all the results. Like I'm worried about how many people are going to show up. I'm worried about how we're going to sound. I'm worried if the booker is going to book us again. I'm, right. you know, all these external things that she was attaching, you know, herself to. And I said, you know, you can't control any of that. I said, the only thing that you need to focus is how much fun you're going to have when you're on stage singing all those songs. So good, Maria. So good. That yeah. was the best advice you could have given her, honestly. That was amazing. Yeah. Cause did, did she kill it? Did she kill oh it? Oh my God. She killed it. She it killed was, it. I knew it. <laughs> it was so it. good. I was blown away. I was so impressed. I, I'm still like thinking of, I took so much video while well, she asked me to <laughs> film a lot. So, so cool. But, yeah. I yeah. love that so much, but see, I think this is such a good conversation because what, what I want those who are listening, you know, I mean, we all know, um, uh, rich dad, poor dad, right. In the four mm -hmm. quadrants, right. And everybody mm -hmm. goes from employee to self-employed from self-employed if they make it to business and then business to investor. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of times we get stuck on the self-employed part because we're so attached to the idea or the baby that we mm -hmm. don't actually leap over to the business part, right. Where we're growing and we, and the business can run without us. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, those who are listening, and I know a lot of you coaches are listening right now, and all of you consultants and entrepreneurs and stuff. And sometimes you just have to expand your mind and stop worrying about like Maria just said, all the outside factors that you cannot control, but yeah. you can control what you're doing in your business, how you show up every day, how you impact the world. What is it that you want to put out there? And I think one of the biggest pieces, and Maria, I don't know if you agree with me or not, is hiring others to do certain things besides you doing it all alone. And that's yes. where we now become from self-employed or that little self-business um, to an actual business. And, you know, I think we have to think outside of ourselves at times because we want to be the person who does the social media, the person who does the funnel building, the person who builds the website, the person who does the <laughs> blog, right? It's like a lot of yeah. work. Yeah. Did you find it to be um, a transition for you going from that, uh, that role that you had, you know, with, I think with the marketing and all that to actually you know, coaching and, and building your own funnel and all that. Did you find a transition piece for you in that? Um, I, I've always believed in, you know, hiring for things that I just can't do or yeah. things I don't want to spend time doing. Right. So Same. I'm, yeah. So I'm, I'm a strong believer and doer of that you know, it outsourcing. And um, you don't have to have an employee. 
You know, right. you can you can pay a freelancer or outsource right. to help you get some things done. Right. So yeah, definitely. Um, as far as like the actual transition, um, I I felt like it was kind of a smooth pivot, really, right. just a, a smooth transition because I think I had already been preparing myself for that. And maybe not even consciously, but maybe subconsciously, you know, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. kind of getting myself prepared. And another thing is sometimes I move slower than I'd like to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and do you think that benefits you moving slower than you'd like to? I, I think it does in some respects. And then in some, you know, in some cases you do have to step it up and move fast. So yeah. it just depends. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like, um, really taking some time to, you know, uh, just embody everything that you're doing. So that way you're not having those freak out moments. <laughs> You mean the ones and, we have all the time? Those, yeah, yeah okay, exactly. Gotcha. So, so if you move a little bit slower, then you're not going to get so overwhelmed. You're not going to get super anxious. You're not going right. to be a ball of stress. All right. of that stuff, you know, because you're you're not putting so much pressure on yourself. Right. And so yeah. I want to talk about that, right? Like what you've been doing to dive into the stuff that you're connected to now, because. I mean, I, I love what you're doing. So you're, you're really, you know, helping women activate their deepest desires, right? Aligning themselves with their personal brand power, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Um, because I want those who are listening to, and I, I have, I think it's like 60% of women or something that listen to the show. So this is your audience, right? <laughs> and so I want to talk about that because I think personal branding is super important. It really is. And especially now, right? Because everything is so online and we're all connected this way mm -hmm. that per the way you show up matters. You yeah. know, back then, it was that fake it till you make it thing. But right. the problem is, is when you fake it till you make it, you feel like a fake, but that's because you are, you're faking it until you make it. Right. And so, you know, just show up as you show up as your personal brand. This is your brand. This is who you are. Show up in that. Right. I don't know if yeah. you agree or disagree with that, but I'd love to hear uh, the personal brand aspect of what you're doing with these women. Like, tell me a little bit about how you're diving into that with them. Okay. Um, yeah, I love that. And I love that you brought the fake it till you make it part up because I, I never liked that saying, right. you know, I never agreed with that. It just never, uh, aligned with me. I'm like, I don't know. Why would you have to do that? Like, <laughs> I kind of get what you're going with here, but right, right. then what, like, then right. what, you know, that right. was always the question on my mind. So that's, that's interesting how you, you know, you brought that up. I love that. That's a good reminder for everyone listening. Don't, don't do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I used to say that back in the day when I was ignorant about it, you know, I used to say, just fake it till you make it. Then I'm like, no, no. Because then I started to realize that it was actually a struggle and imposter syndrome comes in big time because you are an yeah. imposter Yeah. because you are, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then I was like, we have to shift this you know, saying that we've been saying for so many years that even got stuck in my head. And then I'm like, this doesn't work. It doesn't work. I don't feel aligned. I don't feel connected. I feel nothing when I do this. Right. So mm -hmm. I'd love to hear more about how you're connecting women with their personal brand. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been interesting because I've really changed up a lot of my, um, methodology and exercises that I have my clients go through now. Um, I, I kind of step back into more of like the energetics, the, the spiritual kind of that. practices more because I feel like as women, we, we are more like that in a way, right. you know, we don't, yes. I mean, we have to run on some masculine if we're running a business, of course, mm -hmm. but if you want to attract clients attract an audience, you really have to step into your feminine energy. And a okay. lot of that is connection with, you know, the universe, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's just yep. it. Yeah. And energetic. So, um, and tapping into your own energy and really like embodying that. And one, one of the things that, um, I've been having my clients do because I've been doing it myself for the past 
I don't know, I think eight, nine months now is this thing where I, I call it a day of play. And I say, get out of the house, get out of your office, get out of your normal settings, your normal go-tos, put yourself in a, in a place that you've been wanting to go. You don't have to like, you know, take a European trip or anything like that. Just pick a spot somewhere locally that you haven't gone to yet or haven't gone to in a long time that you've been desiring to go to just to explore and put on something cute, by the way, (laughs) to get dressed at, to go out, put on something that you haven't worn in your closet for a while that, you know, is cute. That way you feel cute when you go out. You, so you're already taking one action before you even go out is by getting dressed up. You know, make take mm-hmm. a little bit of effort. Mm-hmm. It's not like you got to do this full glam, but right. just, you know, put on something that makes you feel cute. Do your hair a little bit. Put a little I bit of blush mascara so on agree. something, right? Just, yeah. just a little something extra. And then insert yourself in a spot or an activity that you've been wanting to do that you just haven't done, but it's been on your brain or it's been on your to-do list or a desire list for quite some time, go do that. And then when you're there, just look around, you know, open your eyes up, look up at the sky, look far away. You know, don't just look at your phone. Don't right. look in the immediate, uh, like, this more. you know, yeah. couple of feet in front of you. Really expand like your sights and your senses. So I, I also um, have them, you know, take in the five senses, your, the smell, uh, your, your taste, maybe you're at a cafe or a new spot and you're having a beverage or uh, something to eat, but, you know, taste, smell, um, you know, sight, uh, feel, uh, all of the senses, take that all in and really just feel it. And then when you start to look around, if you see things that really you know, attract your eye, take a photo of that's when you should use your phone and start <laughs> taking snaps right. of things that are uh, really drawing you in for some reason. You're like, oh, I love the color of that. Or, oh, I love the architecture of that. Or, oh my gosh, that, that flower arrangement there is so beautiful. Take photos of all that. Because then when you come back to your business, you can look back and you're like, this is my personal brand. This is where the start of my personal That's brand. That's so good. That's awesome. Yeah. You know why? Because we don't we we start to question what we like though, Maria. Mm-hmm. That's a great that's a great suggestion because when you're looking at that flower arrangement, the colors that you like, you know, the the architecture and all that you were mentioning, you are drawn to that for a reason. Mhm. There's a reason why you're really drawn to that. And then when we sit at the chair to do the personal brand, we go completely left on what it is that we like because we want to know what everybody else likes now, you know? So good, Maria. That's a great suggestion. I mean, with the women that I coach, right? One of the things I always say to them is because they're like, oh, you know, working from home, I'm feeling kind of whatever. I'm like, all right, we're going to, you know, wrap up this call right now. You're going to go take a shower, get your hair done, put some clothes on, and either you're going to come at this as a business person, and you're going to sit on this computer, and we're going to do this the right way. Because yeah. you and your PJs with your hair in a bun and feeling like bl- drop, you know, drab and blah is because you look drab and blah, and we yeah. can't do that right now. You know, I think it's, it's something about that, right? It's, it, you're right. We do need to come at this with a feminine energy. I, I couldn't agree with that more. Because I think there's so much aggression already we have to take with our advertising, with, you know, going out here and and trying to get this business and getting that ROI and making sure we got everything going. And that is already aggressive and and masculine in energy. Mm -hmm. And women, you know, we have been born and bred in this country to have masculine energy, right? Go to school, Mm -hmm. get your education, get your job, get paid, blah, blah, blah. And we don't pause to actually you know, really envelop and go into that feminine energy. I love that you do that the way you're doing it because yeah. you're ask, actually connecting them spiritually and emotionally, you know, intellectually with who they really are as yeah. opposed to how they think they need to show up. Right. right. That's yeah. awesome. I freaking love that. 
Aww. I love that. I'm like loving you more now. Holy crap. Aww. Okay. That's <laughs> so good. All right. So I know that you, you know, you work with women and um and you're helping them build this personal brand. And I'll be honest, Maria, I think it's very, very needed. Very needed. Um, because I want all of us as women to find ourselves because yeah. we are amazing. We really are amazing creatures. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable how amazing we are, right? And mm -hmm. I mean, in in the way that, you know, I believe in God, right? And I believe mm -hmm. that Adam, poor thing, would have been lost in the world all by himself <laughs> had he not made <laughs> Eve, right? So that's just, <laughs> I always say, oh, God knew what he was doing when he created the woman. But I just feel like women are amazing. That's why I gear my business towards women as well, because I just think they're so powerful. They multitask. They know how to do different things. It's, it's just uh, absolutely phenomenal. But I want women to know how to reach out to you, because I know that you have this beautiful coaching program where you are helping these women. And so I'm wondering, is it is it like a one-off, Maria? Do they work with you for a, a period of time? Like, how, what does that look like? Yeah. So at the moment, the the current offers that I have to work with me, I have a signature self VIP, which is a two-hour intensive. Oh, so awesome. if if you're not quite ready to do a full, you know, one-on-one -on -one program, this is a, a good way to just you know get get to work with me. Um, get going and see how you feel. And then, you know, we could move you into more of a one on one space. That's really smart. Um, and then the the second uh, way to work with me is the one on one programs. And I usually um, I know a lot of co my my time frame is maybe a, a little different, but I like to um, do five months. So um, instead of four or three or six, or a year. I yeah, don't Maria, know that does not surprise me. Okay. I just <laughs> that picked five for me. some reason. <laughs> I love that. I just love that you would pick a, a random way to do it. Just like you did with the Instagram and business. Just like, I mean, this is who you are, girl. Go ahead. Okay. Five months. Go ahead. I know. Everyone's like five I months. Love huh? so okay. Much. I love that so much. I love it. Uh, well, you know, the reason why I picked five months is because I, it, it actually came about from working with my clients because I did originally have um, a three month, you know, one on one program at first. And then at the end of three months, they, you know, all my clients were like, oh, that's like, uh, no, we got to still keep working. Right. And so then we were doing like um, month to month after that. And I found like the sweet spot was really around like five months. And then we would kind of taper down after that. But this was like, you know, once a week meeting right. with each other. Um, right. And and so I found that the five month mark was good. So, yeah. So that's the other way. And then I, I also am relaunching my uh, signature online course, which Great. I have been updating like um, a mad woman because it's it's been needing to be updated. And so I've been re-recording all, all of the lessons and that's called define your brand. And that is another way to, um, you know, just get to experience how I work and, and get you into defining your brand. That's more of like, uh, people who are, um, beginning, you know, maybe more of like a, a beginning stages of a business. You need to define your brand or maybe you already have started. You've been, you know, at your business for, one or two years and and you haven't really defined your brand yet so that's also a good online course to take as well so that's, that's awesome i'm glad that's you're doing good. that <laughs> i'm <laughs> glad you're doing that though uh maria because it's true sometimes and I, sp I spoke to these women right because i'm i help women from concept to launch right so we built i have i i ended up getting a whole team who built out all the automations and uh the vsl and the um the marketing all of that kind of stuff because it you're right. Even after one or two years, sometimes you don't know what your brand is yet. You're just still yeah. like, I, I can't get my message right. Or I can't, I don't know my colors. And I, I, you know, so I love that you're doing that, Maria. So before I wrap up, cause I know I kept you a little longer than I should have. That's I'm okay. sorry about that. I just like you. So I should, I should have, I should have cut off like four or five minutes ago, but I want to know where people can find you. So if you can give us that so that people who are listening and really need help with this can reach out to you. So you know, social media or our website, whatever you got, give it to us. Yeah. Um, well, if you just Google my name, I'll pop up 
like on the first page, like with all my links. <laughs> okay, y'all. Y'all heard her. Okay. <laughs> but if you want me to really, you know, get into like the specifics, Instagram is my name, Maria Von Loesch, but it's Maria period Von period Loesch. Um, and then my website's my name, MariaVonLoesch.com. So that's why I said, just type my name in Google. You'll see all my stuff. <laughs> I freaking love it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I'm truly grateful that you stopped by and that we had this great conversation. I love getting to know you and all your stories, but I also love the nuggets that you dropped around here, right? Because I know that people are picking these up like, okay, don't be married to this. Okay. I actually can do this. Let me work on my brand. Let me look at things and pause, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I really love this conversation. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate oh, thank it. Thank you for having me. So much fun. Guys, I told you, right? Oh, I love it when I have good humans. All right, make sure that you follow Maria. I'm going to link her information below. And that way you can Google her on the first page. Okay, y'all. All right, get it together. We love it around here when people come and just drop all this wisdom and knowledge and everything to help you win, help you win. And one thing I love about what Maria is talking about, and I haven't really heard any of my guests do this yet is the fact that she does that two hour intensive to see if you guys align. That is awesome. That is mm -hmm. awesome. And not many people do that. At least I don't know too many people that do that, but like Maria, you don't got six months, you get five. Okay. You don't <laughs> got three months, you get five. This is Maria. Okay. I'm learning. I'm learning. All right, guys. I love you so much. Make sure you follow, like, subscribe. You know the drill. This is Dina Perez, straight talk, no sugar added until next time. Mm -hmm.